stop meeting like this. And then I'll buy the fifth time, it's just a... Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Walk. I've just crossed over the A6, I'm just north of Buxton. And I'm coming down to Bucksworth Basin on the old Peak Forest Canal. And I'm gonna walk the Peak Forest Tramway. It was built in 1796, so we're going hella, hella, hella old. This is actually a recommendation from a subscriber uh, Cosmic Corner said early doors actually that I should get up here and do this and so that's what I'm doing. Um, I managed to get a couple of days to myself so I thought you know drive up come and explore this. It's a really really old tramway but there are quite a lot of remains um, which is great so I'm gonna start off at the at the basin like I say where the tramway met the canal and then I'm gonna head up as far as I can on this line. It takes me up to Chapel Milton where there's two big Midland Railway viaducts which look amazing, still active now. And then there's an old tunnel there called Stoddart Tunnel or Stoddart Tunnel. I'm gonna try and find that, it's a bit lost, it's in the, it's in the sticks, but um, they believed for a long time it was the oldest tunnel in the world. It's actually, a, another discovery, it's the second oldest. It's lowly second place to uh, one on the Butley Gang Road which is just outside Crich, Fritchley Tunnel. That's now officially the oldest one in in the world but second it's not bad is it do you know what i mean okay so i'm walking down to the basin now and i've already found some sleepers stone sleepers <clears throat> which you don't tend to find obviously if you think of sleepers you think of wooden but these are stone sleepers I'll try and mask the uh, wind a little bit there and you can see the holes where the rails these l-shaped rails were drilled in there quite amazing that they're they're still there, you can follow it down and it turned into a bunch of sidings next to the canal. I'm not sure what this is here. It looks railway related, doesn't it? And it carries on. Man, the weather's brutal. It's supposed to be June. And here we go, look, you can see them there. And it went off into different sidings down by the canal. There's a little uh, wagon down there, I'll go and have a look at that as well. So this canal goes up into the northwest, so Manchester, your textile industries. And then here is where it joined that tramway, which then connected it to the limestone quarries of Dove Holes. Dove Holes, sorry, I was dropping my H's. Dove Holes, um, which is just outside Buxton. So you can see, look, there's the sleepers stone sleepers coming alongside it looks like a kind of dry dock doesn't it reminds me of like govan up in scotland but here we go here's those l shaped rails that i was talking about slightly different from the rails that you would be used to seeing and there they are bolted in two two one Oh, here we go. Replica Peak Forest Tramway Wagon. So that's what we look like. Look at that. Incredible. Lots of different lines coming off. This one here, obviously. And there's another one up the top here. Which connected the lower basin. Obviously it's holiday makers now, and I guess actually some of these people probably live here. I think the worst place is to live, to be honest. I'll follow this down. You can make it out, can't you? You know where it's going off in a little point there. And then what you can do, you can carry on walking, if you like, on the uh, towpath of the Peak Forest Canal and that'll take you a few miles in that direction up towards Whaley Bridge, I assume. I think it's kind of that way. I might be wrong, correct me if I am. Okay, there you go, and it comes along the side there, look. So that's Bucksworth Basin, which you can imagine would be an absolute hive of activity back in the day. Like wagons coming back and forth, back and forth barges up and down up and down it was pulled by horses and then some of the inclines that are further up they just use gravity as they do on those gangways those tramways 
You might have noticed, I called it Bucksworth Basin. When you look at the signs, it says Bugsworth Basin. Now the reason is, the village, it used to be called Bugsworth. And this was opened in 1796. So at that time it was Bugsworth, it was Bugsworth Basin, Bugsworth Village. And then the locals got together and decided, don't like the name Bugsworth, not a fan. So we're gonna call it Bucksworth instead. So they changed the name. But I have a theory on that. Because that's the only information I could find was that they basically didn't like it, so they decided to change the name. Just south of here, you've got Buxton. Now Buxton in that time was very posh, it's very well to do. It was a spa town, and it's where your great wealthy industrialists would holiday with their wives and children and no doubt illicit lovers and so I'm thinking Buggy as it's still commonly known to locals Buggy wanted a little bit of that Buxton poshness he wanted to dip its finger in that pie so they said right let's call it Bucksworth and then at least we've got a connection to Buxton all conjecture completely of course but you know Okay, Mr. Satterfield's Branch, which sounds like a Catherine Cookson novel. That was a lime shed. If you come over the other side, there's two big lime kilns there. One there, and one just the other side of that. Other railway lines went behind that, but it's been decimated now by the A6. There's no remains of that, apart from a tunnel, um, which is over that other side, which I did have a quick look for when I started, but not a chance. Yeah, it's Baron Clough Tunnel, which again was recommended by Cosmic Corner subscriber. I clambered over there, and I'm not bothered about getting stung too much, do you know what I mean? It is what it is, but it was just crazy. I managed to find the cutting, I think, and I was trying to sort of negotiate the brambles, and then I had to negotiate, um, which looked like, like an old trampoline wrapped in barbed wire, and I thought, do you know what? I'll knock this on the head, I think. Okay, so this is where the canal ends. End of the road here. And so now we carry on and we'll get on to the Peak Forest Tramway. Weather's made a bit of a turn now, it's pretty grim. But I'll keep stomping on. I hope the sound's not too bad. Apologize if it is. That pub behind me, the navigation in, used to be owned by a lass from Coronation Street um, in the 1960s. Um, I'm not into soaps if I'm honest, but she's quite famous, I think, a bit before my time there. I'm trying to remember her name now, the top of my head. It's bad, isn't it? So there's the Peak Forest tramway. Love these old pictures. So I'm walking up a road now. I know the tramway hugs Black Brook, which is that little stream next to me. So as long as I've got that either side of me, I'm in the right ballpark. I'm hoping it joins, you know, a proper track in a minute. And it's not just, you know, concrete. It'd be nice if there is some kind of remains. Like those sleepers we've seen back there, they were great. As I say, this tramway was built in 1796 by Benjamin Outram. Anyone sort of native to Derby or familiar with Derby will recognise that name. It's, it's synonymous with Derby really because he built the, uh, the Little Eaton Gang Road which went from Little Eaton Wharf and it connected up through sort of Kilburn and um, Denby up to, the, uh, up to the collieries. And as you come through Little Eaton, just off Little Eaton roundabout by the Starbucks, it's called Outram's Wharf. And you'd be forgiven for thinking what, because it's an industrial estate, like there's no water there. So the canal was filled in a long, long time ago, the Derby Canal, unfortunately. Oh, hang on, hang on. Right, I'm actually not on the tramway. Okay, so the tramway's up there, it's all overgrown. So it must have come the other side of Black Brook then, but you know, without a footpath on it. And there's the bridge. Still got a little bit, a little bit to see, that's good. Let's get underneath here. I survived a couple hundred years, it shouldn't come down on me now, should it? Famous last words. At least I'm out of the rain as well. Here we go. Let's try and find another little bit of the bridge here that goes over the, the brook. It 
two things that babble, Brooks and me. Right. I'll try and push my camera up as far as I can because I can't actually get down there, but there you can see. Bridge. They built things proper back then, didn't they? Okay. Back underneath, onto that little road, and then I'm hoping then I'm going to join up with it in a sec. It went all the way off to Dove Holes. I can hear a train. Can you hear that? So that'll be the Midland line then. Going up to Manchester, I guess. Or down to Buxton. Obviously, I can't actually hear what direction that train's going in. Okay, so now I can get on top of this bridge then. That's a touch. Okay, so I'm on top of the bridge now then. So I'm on the gangway, or tramway. I never know the difference, to be honest. You hear the sort of the terms kind of interchangeable. Okay, so that's just gonna go back where I've come from. Right. See, this was double track. About 1806, 1803, around about that time. Should have my dates correct, really. It was double tracked, apart from Stoddart Tunnel, which is where we're going, and I think possibly this bridge here because there's no way that's double track. 1803, I just checked, I checked my notes. 1803 it was doubled, but obviously not in all sections. Um, so that, I guess that would create a bit of a bottleneck, which probably wouldn't have been ideal back in the day because this would have been really busy, like lime um, was used for everything. Um, they used it for sanitation, they used it to build houses, they used it um, as a fertiliser, which obviously would have been vital. So they probably couldn't get it out of the ground quick enough, to be honest, straight into those kilns where they'd make quick lime. Every time I hear Bugsworth in my head, I want to put on a northern accent. It just feels like it should be Bugsworth. You know I mean, Bugsworth. They'd have called it Bugsworth on Coronation Street, wouldn't they? There we go. Just have a little explore over here. It's nice. It's nice being out in the sticks, I've got to say. It's the thing about Derbyshire, you know, it's beautiful around here. There's, these things are everywhere. You can probably, like, if you live here for a long period of time, you can probably take it for granted, to be fair. For me, I grew up on the Isle of Wight. And so you can take like the, take the beaches and stuff for, for granted. Um, I don't do that anymore, to be honest, because I moved to the city for a few years. Did a couple of years in London when I was playing in bands. And then I lived in the city of Derby, like proper city centre for the best part of 10 years. So I appreciate the countryside a lot more now, you know. And when I go back to the Isle of Wight, granted, rarely. But when I go back, you know, I do appreciate it the sea and it's like you know get myself in the water just to make a point of doing it you know so one thing I miss I must admit I wouldn't change anything about Derbyshire whatsoever greatest place to live I'd live I'd die here happily um but it'd be nice if it had the sea but then if it had the sea I couldn't afford to live here obviously it's called the peak district for a reason there's loads of peaks surrounding this valley that we're sat in and um they just look great like even on a grim day today like today I'm, I'm you know they're still amazing I'm just hoping, you know, by the time I get to the other end, because it is brightening up, to be fair, touch wood. I'm just hoping once I get to the other end that um, it will really, you know, really brighten up and I can get some great shots of those, uh, those peaks. This uh, tramway didn't actually close till the 1920s when, you know, railways were, were, were littering this area. So I guess they, you know, they took all the... Uh, they took all the gigs, but um, there's an half decent life then. When you think things like the Great Central, obviously I did on the last walk, Great Central only lasting sort of 65 odd years, which is a bit of a travesty really, given the engineering that's gone into it. You know, this one is, um, has lasted a fair bit longer. So, you know, that's summer, I guess. You can see these walls here. So these would have been original. You see that a lot, like with the Kreitz tramways, you know, the, 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 the Butley company ones down at Fritchley and at, at Bullbridge, they're exactly the same. You can kind of see remains in, in fields and stuff and, and you, you know what it is because 
there's these little walls either side. It's a little bit of an incline now. Nothing in the in the realms of the High Peak Railway jobby um, down at Cromford, but still, you know, my heart rate's up. So I'm going to be speaking at a conference this weekend. Well, tonight actually, in um, in Liverpool. Um, but for whatever reason, it got cancelled. So anyone who's a parent will know you, you have to book things in the diary. So we've got a diary, me and my wife. And if something comes up for her, she'll put it in the diary. So I know oh, I can't book anything on that day because obviously I'll have the kids and vice versa. So I said to her, I said, oh, that Liverpool conference is off. So you can take that, you know, Friday night, Saturday out of the diary. And uh, she's a good egg, my wife. So she said, no, no, go, go out and, and do something instead. Take some time for yourself. So obviously for me, it's a walk in it. Always love it. So, so that's why I'm here. So I'm going to do this. And then I'll go back to Buxton. I've got a little hotel, a little guest house, single bed job, but it's cheap and it's all I need. And um, I'm going to have a couple of beers at the Buxton Brewery Tap House, which is my favourite, favourite brewery. And then tomorrow, I'm going to walk the Montsell Trail, part of the Montsell Trail, um, down from the Lime Kilns, just north of Millersdale, through Millersdale, through um, Lytton Mill. Crazy history there. And I'll end on um, Headstone Viaduct, which is my favorite place in the world. I could just stand there for hours. Um, so I'll do that tomorrow. See, these buildings would have been here at least towards the end, I imagine, of, um, of the tramway's existence. Would have been a lot bigger by the look of that, that wall there. Look at that. It's great. I don't know what this is. But I do like that tower up there and I just love how trees are just like I'll oh, just grow anywhere I me. Mean. Mind you my wife's like that we're sleeping we sleep anywhere honestly I've never seen anything like it once right her bucket list was always to see the northern lights so I took her for Christmas out to Iceland to see the northern lights so we went on this boat trip so you get out of Reykjavik and away from obviously you know light pollution so you can actually see them and we saw them which was amazing I turned around, right? Bear in mind we're on a boat in the top of the North Atlantic, fast asleep, stood up, just leaning up against the pillar like that, gone. So, how is that even possible? Braby Fuller, Braby Fuller, no idea what that is. But that behind it looks amazing. Look at that. It looks great. Yeah, I'm back between the little the little walls. I have a notice board here as well, actually. This sort of area, I'm gonna say, I'm, you'll think I'm speaking too soon. It strikes me as the kind of area that this notice board won't have graffiti on it. Hiya. There you go, look at that. Seems like a nice area. So there's the tramway wagons. Marshalling Lard in 1905. Whitehall Works, Chinley, with the main line of the tramway on the right. See, they still call it Bugsworth, Bugsworth Basin. And we're right there, about halfway, about the halfway point. Okay, so we'll cross over the road then. So there's the, you make out the British Rail sign there. That's going down there to, I think it's Chinley Station, I think, down in that direction. But we're carrying on the tramway walk. It's a lot quieter than I expected, I've got to say. Like, I know, you know, weather's not amazing, but it is a Friday and it is hella beautiful up here. And it's not like it's a secret walk, do you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty well advertised and stuff in the local area, so, you know. But when I looked, you know, looked at the tramway and, and had a look at, you know, some of the history and stuff, it did say, you know, you'll, you'll have the country to yourself, basically, when you're walking. You know, which I'm not gutted by, because then it's just, I mean, it's one-on-one -on -one experience, which is a little bit nicer than experiences that I've had in the past when I've been doing filming for, you know, TV shows and different things aside from this. 
is you'll be filming something like a piece of camera like this, you know, I'm, I'm here in, you know, Bugsworth Basin, and then someone will just walk right up to you, like mid sentence, and say, um, What are you filming this for then, mate? I'll be polite and I'll tell you, but can you let me finish? <laughs> is that all right? Because it's, as soon as he says cut, we're chat. Right, a lot of building going on around here now. That's it, I've said, I've said it was quiet too early, but I can just make out the peaks in the background there. Look at those hills. Amazing. You might have noticed actually, because when I edit these down, I have to watch them. And um, I say amazing, that was a touch and magic constantly. And I'm annoying myself, so no doubt I'm annoying you as well. Excuse the wind, because it has got quite blustery, but look at that in the distance. I'm not going to say amazing or magic. Concreted over a lot of it, but if you look here, I don't know what that is, but you know, there's metal in there. That could have been one of the sleepers, couldn't it? Thinking about it. It's the first one, if it is, it's the first one I've seen for, for quite a while. Right, lad in the background, Zephyr and Jeffin. But there you go, look. These are sleepers in place. Late 1700s. Incredible, really, isn't it? They're still here. But people don't even notice them, they just sort of walk the dogs up and down here. This kind of history is everywhere, isn't it? It's around us, we just need to open our eyes to it. Um, easily missed, though, if you, if you don't know what you're looking for. Just found a job lot more here as well. Again, look, you can follow the path line of them. Amazing. Oh, magic. Hey, mate. Look at this. Again, more stone sleepers. Just at the edge of a real nice little estate there, look, but follow these along the line. So just before I carry on up the tramway, this would have been the site of something then because they're hella old capstones I'll get on the old maps then and see whether that was um, in a little factory or a mill or something with access to the tramway so there's another another line of the uh, stone sleepers look there's loads and loads of remains now I went a while with, with, with not a lot but um We've really struck gold a bit here. So Benjamin Outram, Outram, who built this, is a clever geezer. His um, his dad was an ironsmith. So they started this company, iron company. So they made the rails as well. So not only did he kind of you know build it and design it, but actually they you know they supplied the goods as well. So they must have been loving it. Here we go. Is another load of sleepers. So I was reading that after a while they got rid of those L-shaped rails um, that were just bolted in and they, they ended up using little chairs which is I guess you know exactly the same as they do now if you see that you can make out the indentation there of where they'd had a chair sat on it and the rail sat on that rather than a rail bolted directly into it. Still carrying on. You're probably bored of stone sleepers by now but for me like you know, these are really pretty intact, you know, given how old this is. Oh, it fell over there. We're probably not too far now from those Chapel Milton viaducts, the, the Midland Railway viaducts. They kind of fork off like that, two of them, amazing structures. Um, when I get there, I've kind of got to go off the tramway and it takes you onto the main road and then I have to walk down the main road a little bit and try and find this tunnel, this stowed art tunnel because the original path of the tramway just carries on through uh, into some fields and it's all blocked off so I'll have to come off it, get onto the uh, onto the road as I say and then try and find it and it's a bit of a needle and a stack job but I'll do my best and then um, and then that's the end of the line unfortunately you can make out when you look on Google Maps, you look from above, you can see, you know, the earthworks, as it were, where 
you know, you can see kind of where the tram line would have carried on, but it just goes through private land and fields full of horses and stuff. So that's the end of the line, unfortunately. It's about three miles, I think. So six miles, obviously, so I've got to stomp back. So it's not a massive walk. You all right, mate? Too busy eating. At least I know I'm on the right path because it kind of went a little bit scatty back there and it kind of looked like you had a few different options but as long as I've got these bad boys I'm getting closer now to the A6 as well um, so part of me thinks that we're getting towards the end of the line but not overly sure at the minute so there's another sign there so the tramway went underneath those two viaducts that's in the 1950s so obviously the rail's gone, but you can make out those stone sleepers and that's obviously what we've been looking at for, for about a mile and a half now. Oh wow, look at those viaducts in the distance. Can you make them out? Incredible, right. So the tram line's going straight through there in it, Bosch, um, which obviously I can't do because the A6 has stitched that. So I'll have a walk down, try and get back on it a little bit later on, or at least as close to get me back on it as I can. Okay, I'm walking down into Chapel Milton. There is a path up that way, but it's a test track now. So one, it's private and two, it's a test track. You know, I'm not sure what they're testing, but I don't think I'd want to be on the track when they're testing it. So I'll keep walking down. Once I get under the viaduct, I'll jump into the bushes, try and find this tunnel. Look at that for a great reveal. There's two of them as well, there's another one behind it. They run right next to each other. And our gangway is up there in that row of trees. So I keep changing between gangway and tramway, don't I? I apologize for that. If there is a difference between the two, please comment, let us know. I just kind of use them sort of as and when. I just assume they're sort of the same thing because I, I hear people use them in the same in the same terms. Okay, so there's those incredible viaducts. I've not seen one like that before. You know, they filled in one of the arches. I'm not sure what that's all about. I reckon that's the gang road tramway <laughs> right there. Okay, so this is basically the end of the line as far as the, the tramway trail goes. You go underneath these incredible viaducts. Annoyingly, that, that one arch that's filled in, it looks amazing. I can't get to that because the brook's in between the two of us and it's private land. Um, so I'll send the drone up at the end and, and see, you know, what I can get without being too invasive. But as I said, I think, I think that's, that's the tramway there. That's what I think. Um, so let's go and try and find this tunnel. So you can get down that way, you go across the river. I'll go and explore it because I'm sure it's dead, dead pretty. Oh mate, you don't realise till you're under it. The sheer size of it. Man, Victorian engineering was next, next level, wasn't it? That's a beautiful little brook there. It's just amazing, two of them as well. Huge. I'll, I'll come back around because I'm, I'm going to try and obviously stick as true as I can to the, to the tramway. They truly are unbelievable structures. Built in 1867 by the Midland Railway. In that direction, you're going down towards Buxton. In that direction, you're heading up Stockport, Manchester. That way, I think you're joining up with the Hope Valley line, I'm pretty sure. Um, which is another beautiful part of the world. Um, right, now your guess is as good as mine at this point. Okay, so the tramway would have come through, it's in that direction, so I'm going to get onto this road and uh, do my best to find it. There is a Wikipedia page for it and it's Stoddhart Tunnel, it's got a little picture of like the opening that you can see, um, it's just whether or not I can get to it. There we go, there's a good strain. Just when I don't have the drone up. It's almost the way in it. Still, we've got a view of it. I could be here all day though, judging by the length of some of these goods trains. 
It looks amazing there, doesn't it? Just going over the top of the village. Look at that. See these old telephone boxes as well, they say defibrillator on them now, they have to tell you. Because they never used to have defibrillator written on them, they just used to have it inside the telephone box and sort of locals would know that it was there. And then one day someone was dead panicked, trying to make a quick phone call, grabbed it and you know, so now they've got to, um, yeah, I've made that up, but the idea of it is making me laugh. Okay, so we're coming into a chapel in Lethrift. Which I'm assuming is a, a language left over from uh, William the Conqueror. Okay, this eats around here. And that's all I know. It would make sense the tram line coming from that direction. There's the stonework. Obviously, don't worry about the sort of you know the topography and stuff because it was one of those lines that had inclines and stuff. So just because it's a crazy hill doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a railway. Oh mate, what is it they say? If you don't have to work for it, it's not worth having it. Um, I'm not sure that's always the case. Though I'm sure I'd think that if I found a winning lottery ticket, to be honest. But I'll apply it to this instance and hope that uh, it serves me well. And I don't break my neck. Okay. Right. Let's get to the side of the road. Okay, so I'm underneath the A6 and I can jump over and get down a bit. It's pretty overgrown though. Um, so I'm guessing it's down in there, but I don't have a scooby how to get down there. One day, right, I'm going to learn to wear trousers on these walks, you know, instead of shorts. Um, <laughs> then where's the fun? Where's the fun in that? You haven't got scars. Right. I might be in the ballpark now. A little bridge there, that goes over the brook. Now, remember what I said earlier, this tramway follows the brook. You know, it goes from left to right into Twines, but it's always alongside it. So is this the tram line through there and through there so is that the tunnel mouth I think it might be you know I think it might be Give this me. Okay. ouch I'm gonna go with on that one now what I'm looking for is just the top of it sticking out because that's all that's there. Right, I'm going to have to clamber through. I'll turn this off. Clamber through. Women are more sensible than men, aren't they? I think that's why you tend to find men doing stupid things like this. If I said to my wife, do you want to come do this? She'd just go, you're having a laugh, mate. Um, keep going. I've come this far, and I? Okay. Do you know what's the most disheartening thing? Is I might not even be in the right place. That's the that's the sad part. I could just be doing this for absolutely no reason. Right, there is a wall there. Oh, probably coming for me. Someone said there's a crack down there. Right. Right, keep going, plugging on, plugging on. This tunnel is a scheduled ancient monument. And the fact they've probably not done it yet is because no one can find it. Right. I'm thinking now, maybe I'll go back the other way. Yeah, I've reached the end now. That stone there, that's just a wall for the road. Um, so it ain't gonna be there. Let's hook it up. Just make sure, yeah. Right, I'm back by the main road now. 
let's just erase all of that from all of our memories what a horror show okay I'm not giving up though right if in doubt ask a local so I've asked the local chap I was on the right side so it is this side we're slightly further up basically the side I went to first that tunnel mouth is obliterated by the A6 so that's why you kind of got a bit thrown I was like yeah not really understanding where, where I was going so then it carries on underneath here and it comes out by a nursing home so he said go into the gate to the nursing home straight away Bosch is right there so I've just stung myself up for no reason amazing so this is the line of it basically through obviously the A6 straight underground underneath the road and it should be right here by this nursing home okay chapel lodge so this is the nursing home that he told me so as soon as you go in he said don't go in the nursing home just turn straight right there we go not a bramble in sight what a nightmare Here we go, right. Not sure if I can get down there. Um, at least not with great ease, but. Right, I'm gonna clamber. There is a massive drop the other side. Oh God, midgy fest. So obviously I'm gonna try not to fall down that. So what I'll do is I'll just stand on this wall here. There we go. And there you have it. The second oldest railway tunnel around. And then the tram line carries on. Like I say, then it just goes into private land and stuff, so you can't walk that. But there it is. We got there in the end, Stodart Tunnel. Oh, mate. I am stung to bits. Still, I can say I've seen it. But then so can you, and you didn't get stung. So that was that, we found it. Started off as a nice leisurely walk, didn't it? <laughs> Looking at those concrete sleepers, like they're amazing. And ended up a bit spicy for no reason, because I didn't ask a member of the public sooner. But um, yeah, we got to see those sleepers from 1796. That's cool. Um, obviously all the way down from Bugsworth Basin, stomping up here to Chapel Milton to these amazing viaducts that are behind me. And then we found the second oldest railway tunnel in the world, which is, it was a bit of a battle that it didn't need to be, but still great to see it. As always, click like, subscribe, comment. Thank you so much to Cosmic Corner as well for, for the suggestion. I've really enjoyed the walk. You know, even the weather, you can hear it. Even that's not dampening it really for me. I'm gonna go now, stomp back to the navigator you're in, have a pint and a bite to eat and I'll leave you with some drone footage of those incredible viaducts at Chapel Milton. Take care, I'll see you next time.